What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, this is the next entry into the Assassin's Creed franchise. This time around, we're throwing down with the Vikings. And in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you my general impressions after having a chance to go hands-on with the game for roughly three hours. So, right out the gate, I will say that I did enjoy the game. Uh, with that in mind, I also enjoyed Origins and Odyssey, and this is very much in the same vein as those games. Um, very, very similar, in fact, so much so that, you know, you could look at this and almost just say that it's Odyssey with a Viking skin put on. Um, and to be honest, that's not necessarily a bad thing, in my opinion. Um, the gameplay has been changed up a little bit. Uh, I feel that in Odyssey in particular, we started to get a little bit ridiculous in terms of how much damage we were able to do. And one of the things I liked about this is that it felt a little bit more grounded. Uh, we were still able to do ridiculous amounts of damage with broken setups, but I mean, I always end up finding stuff like that anyway, so it's not really that much of a surprise. Uh, but in general, the combat felt a lot more balanced as compared to how it did back in Odyssey. Now, whether or not this ends up remaining true as the game progresses and we get towards endgame, that remains to be seen. But at least from what I had a chance to go hands-on with in the demo that we played, I did feel it was pretty well balanced. So diving into the gameplay changes in particular and what they've mixed up, uh, there are a couple additions that they have made to the combat system. In the demo, we only had access to uh, one equipped weapon at a time, but a couple that we could change around with. Uh, but it was confirmed that you will be able to quick swap between multiple weapons. And now your hands are independent of one another. So you could do a shield in one hand and an axe in the other, or double axes, or a flail and an axe, or a two-handed weapon, or two shields, or really whatever you want. Uh, which is something that I like. In an Odyssey, you very much just kind of picked your weapon, and then it was like, hey, here's our super mega god spear that you can use for other stuff. And we don't have anything like that here, which is nice to see. Uh, the combat itself, one of the biggest changes is in parries. Uh, you actually have a unique parry for each weapon now, which I found to be pretty delightful. Uh, I think back in Odyssey, parrying just kind of became second nature, because you would just press the buttons and you'd, you know, clash with your spear and then get a follow-up attack. And now it feels more unique. The, the parry is a lot more in line with something like, say, Dark Souls, where depending on what weapon you use, you're going to have a unique parry for it. So with the spear, for example, you get the parry off and you're going to shove the spear into the enemy and then rip it out and do a bunch of damage. Uh, if you manage to get the parry while using dual axes, however, you could follow it up with a multitude of attacks and essentially just beat the snot out of your enemy with your axes like they're drumsticks or something. So that was probably my favorite change with the combat. Uh, another thing I really liked is they now have a stunned attack you can do. And if I had to describe it, it's kind of like an attack of opportunity, essentially when you do a big chunk of damage to the enemy or a special move, something that would stagger them, it puts them into a down state where you can run up and press R3 and you would get a unique animation that in most cases would kill the enemy against bosses you would do a big chunk of damage, but this ranged from jumping up into the air and stomping on them with your foot to hitting them in the face with the shield to taking their sword and running it through them. So there's definitely a bit of that kind of visceral sense that you would expect in a game that's supposed to be about Vikings. Uh, the combat is is you know, very kind of brutal and in your face and it did feel good. Uh, and I liked that a lot because I remember with the time I spent in Odyssey, I liked Odyssey a lot at the start, but once you got towards the end of Odyssey, you got more into the realm of gods than the realm of man. And everything was about, you know, how much hundreds of thousands of damage can you do in a single attack. So I'm glad to see they're trying to keep things a little bit more grounded this time around. Uh, with that being said, it wasn't all completely grounded. I mentioned this before, but there were instances where I managed to weave certain abilities together to do absurd amounts of damage. Hopefully we'll see stuff like this patched. I mean, as you can see right here, I'm able to basically chunk this boss for the majority of its health. Uh, and given it took a little while to, to get those arrows charged and do it, still, I think it's a little bit broken that I'm able to even do things like that in the first place. Uh, with what is essentially just a basic bow skill and a bow that isn't particularly legendary or special or anything along those lines. You can imagine if I had, you know, a, a more uh, focused setup around the bow, this probably would have instant killed the boss, if we're being honest. 
Uh, one of the other big changes to combat is we now have a set amount of healing available. Looking down at the bottom left, you see a 5 over a heart there. Uh, that is how many heals I have on hand. You can replenish those from picking up food supplies in the towns, out in the environment, all kinds of places. Uh, but it does make combat a little bit more intense since you can't just disengage and your health's going to go back up to full. Um, I will say that when you do get hit, you, you do take some beefy chunks of damage. So in terms of damage going out and damage coming in, uh, it seems like they're trying to take a semi-realistic approach, almost like they, they took a little bit of inspiration from For Honor in that aspect. Uh, beyond that, as you can see here, we have abilities, making a return, melee abilities, as well as ranged abilities. Uh, this is what we had available in the demo, not too much to mess with. But one of the big changes that I did like is now to level up abilities, you actually like find scrolls throughout the world. So as opposed to just you know dumping all of your points exactly where you want them, the game actually promotes you to explore and look around and raid towns and all that stuff to max out your abilities versus just kind of going for whatever the next high XP target is and then dumping stuff into your tree. Moving on from there uh, to some other gameplay changes, the implementation of raids is something that I really liked. Um, and I'm going to be making comparisons to Odyssey a lot because that was the most recent Assassin's Creed and so that's kind of my baseline for this comparison. But back in Odyssey we had the battles between Athens and Sparta and you'd pick a side, you'd fight for it, you'd just fight a bunch of enemies and then eventually the leader would show up, you'd fight him and that was it. And it always felt very out of place, like I understood the process and the reasoning behind it but it never really felt like there was any impact. You know, you do this fight and it's like, hey, great, the territory's flipped to Athens and the color that's on the shoulders, or the, the soldiers has changed, but that's really it. Uh, whereas with the raids, you're literally just showing up into an area, raiding it with your crew, and essentially destroying it. You know, you're killing everyone that's there, you're looting it for all the supplies. Um, and what I liked is the raids themselves had some variety. Now, given there were only two raids that we could do in the demo, but in some of them you'd approach and there were a bunch of archers and kind of a central point you had to go into town. Into others there were a bunch of uh, berserkers and spearmen that would charge you. Whereas the battles in Odyssey felt very copy and paste. The battles between Spartans and Atha all felt like the same thing no matter what. Uh, the raids felt a little bit more dynamic because they have their own unique location. There might be different units at the raid so that was something I enjoyed. Uh, in addition, if your troops went down, if your raiders kind of went down, you'd have to pick them back up or they could die and you could lose them. So it kind of gives more of a sense of managing your army and keeping your guys healthy versus just, you know, hey, these are more expendable NPCs that I don't care about, which is something that I enjoyed as well. Um, as for the, the general world, um, I'd say probably the biggest downside here is while the world has a lot going on and it feels alive and there's people you can talk to and all kinds of things you can do, from a graphical standpoint, the game definitely did not look next-gen. Um, given this was a remote demo, so I don't know what specifics the device I was playing on had. Uh, I'd assume this was a PC demo because I was playing on PC. But I don't know how good or you know poor that machine was compared to the, the rig I have. So it's hard to say if this was you know every setting maxed out and whatnot. The graphics really pushed to just how high they can be. Um, but just based on what I saw, even if you were to take the graphics and push them all the way up, I don't think this game would come out looking as good as like The Last of Us Part Two or Ghost or any of those other more recent open world-esque games that we've seen. Now given that the game does still look good, Odyssey was a beautiful game, I'd say this easily matches up to Odyssey, but after some of the more recent games that have come out that are trying to kind of really push the the ps4 just to the limits that it can really trying to, to push what you can do with the new hardware and pcs my initial impression of this game was that it wasn't pushing that envelope it felt like they were working with the same engine that we had in odyssey it looks like uh, the combat and stuff that's been changed up a little bit but from a visual standpoint it doesn't really look all that different and in fact because we're in a viking setting and so things are a little bit darker a little bit more grimy uh, i feel like it almost pulls the graphics down a little bit because there was a lot of bloom a lot of lighting in odyssey uh, a lot of these very extravagant locations and, and tons of water and the setting here is very very different and i think that kind of the, the darker color palette that we're seeing in general almost makes it look strictly worse 
than what we saw in Odyssey. But once again, this was just based on a demo machine. I have no idea what these settings were at. I don't know if they were uh, at medium or ultra. My guess is they're probably closer to medium because uh, we didn't do this event in person because of the pandemic. They essentially set up a thing where we were able to remotely connect to a PC and they recorded the footage locally and then sent it to us. So kind of a unique setup for this as opposed to where I typically would go to an event and record in person, but you know, it is what it is. I, to be honest, I wasn't trying to travel with the, the state of the world right now anyway, so I'm still glad I had the opportunity to play it, um, but we'll, we'll have to see. I think once they, they have a, um, an in-person demo, something that I can download and run on my side that I'll have a better idea of how the game runs or how it feels. Now, graphics aside, I do think the world was in a pretty nice state considering we only had a chance to play a, a demo slice of the game. Uh, I think with the way that the Assassin's Creed franchise has gone with Odyssey and Origins, we've seen Ubisoft really try to bring the overall world alive. You know, people all over the place, kids playing in the streets, uh, people going about their day and doing their thing, and there's merchants and little submissions and quips and all that stuff. So that all is still here. Uh, it has that that very, you know, Anglo-Saxon early Vikings people sitting here dealing with horses, and the one guy complaining that he had to shovel hay all day. And you can expect all of that stuff to still be in the game. Um, on top of that, they have added a lot of Viking-themed type mini games, which I had a lot of fun with. Uh, I'm going to have a separate video that looks more in-depth at the various mini games and stuff that you can do. Uh, just kind of, you know, it'll probably be commentary less, but just taking a look at all that stuff. But, I mean, I did a rap battle. There was a, uh, a stone stacking type challenge where you had to stack up stones and uh, I think it was a cairn or something is what it's called. But stack them up to reach a certain plateau without the stones toppling over. Uh, you There were different visual puzzles where you had to line things up to create a rune. There were warrior duels where you'd show up and it'd be some guy that's like, he's old and he's like, oh, you know, I'm, I plan on fighting to the death and I'm going to fight to the death. And so you'd fight him to the death and kill him in front of his own son. And then his son's like, oh, this is what it means to be a warrior. So th at the very least, um, we are seeing a big shift. Uh, whereas in Odyssey stuff was, I don't know, it was, it was just very generic. You know, it was very, uh, it didn't necessarily feel like like something that was appropriate for Greece. I mean, I'd say stuff was, was all right for the setting, but a lot of the side missions and the side activities you could do were very much like climb this tower, find this relic, you know, explore this tomb. And it seems like they've tried to take a bigger focus around the overall theme of the game as opposed to just jamming it full of general stuff to do just to keep you busy. Uh, in terms of audio, both sound design as well as music, I think they've done a pretty good job so far. Uh, probably one of the biggest things I was excited for is when you're on the boat now, we've had a return to both songs as well as tales. So you can swap between uh, having the headmen on the boat tell you different Viking tales while you're traveling around. You can have them sing various Viking ballads and whatnot and have the boat join in. And it reminded me a lot more of the shanties from Black Flag. I know we, we kind of had something like that in, in Odyssey, but in Odyssey I was like, I don't, I don't need to hear anything you're saying, just just stop. Uh, whereas this time it was it was pretty badass getting to hear it, so I, I did have fun with that. Um, the sound and combat and whatnot, things sound visceral, things sound heavy, it feels like the weapons have weight. Uh, the one thing which I will say, I did not expect the voice actor that we got. Uh, for the main character here. Uh, now, I only played as the male character. I didn't check out the female character, but I will say the male character's voice sounds kind of soft, uh, very kind of just relaxing and, and soothing. And I mean, it, it, he's a good voice actor, but personally, I didn't feel that it fit our MC very well. It's your enemy, not me. I come on behalf of the late Oswald of Elmenham. You're still a Dane from top to two. It's your meddling that led to Oswald's death, even our kingdom for the worse. Oswald died defending East Anglia, defending you. Will you not do the same? I'm going to take a page from ACG's book here before we wrap up, and I want to talk about fun factor to close things out. Because at the end of the day, to be honest, the most important thing here is whether the game is fun. Um, you know, regardless of how large a world is or how beautiful the game is. If it's not fun to play, then why bother playing it? And I will say I enjoyed my time in AC Valhalla. 
Um, I will also say that I think I'm a little bit biased because it has Vikings. I, I love Viking stuff. I love the Vikings TV show. Um, I absolutely just gorged watching Vinland Saga, the Viking anime. Like, I was literally like a fat kid in a cake store. I was just like, give me more. Just shoving it into my brain. Every time I could watch that show, I, would, I had it on. It was amazing. Um, For Honor, I still play For Honor constantly and main the Vikings in For Honor. So I'm obviously a little bit biased here. Um, and, you know, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, you know, I, I, I just enjoyed my time with it. I liked running around. Uh, I found myself enjoying the dual axes the most. Um, at least from what I saw and experienced, I think you could end up, you know, in like heavy armor running around with the shield and the flail uh, closer to like a, a, a Saxon, Saxon Crusader if you wanted to. Um, but just, you know, going dual axes and throwing axes in a short bow. I was having an absolute blast playing the game. So, at least from what I got to experience, I do think it's something I'll look forward to this fall. Um, I will also say that if you're coming into this expecting it to be some immense new game experience that's going to blow you out of the water, I don't think it'll do that. But if you were someone that enjoyed Origins or you enjoyed Odyssey and you want more of that gameplay, you want to see that gameplay a little bit more polished, maybe with a new setting, then I think you'll end up being really happy with AC Valhalla. So that is going to wrap this one on up. Uh, I'm going to have two more videos taking a look at AC Valhalla coming away. Uh, one is going to be mostly without commentary, just taking a look at one of the story missions, which involves raiding an area. Uh, and then the second will have a little bit of commentary, and it's basically going to look at all the different mini games and stuff that you can do in the world. So definitely make sure to keep your eyes out for that. Otherwise, thanks for coming on by. Hope you guys enjoyed getting a chance to take a look at the early footage. Let me know your thoughts below. I'm curious on what people think. Uh, I know that there was some footage that leaked out for the game and there were already a lot of divisive opinions going around. So I'm really curious to hear you guys sound off in the comments section. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.